There's been a bit of an outcry over Anglo-American CEO Cynthia Carroll's new position as chairwoman of subsidiary Anglo Platinum. This flies in the face of the King 3 report on corporate governance, which recommends that companies' chairs should be non-executive and independent. Joining me with more is Ansi Romalo. She's executive director at the Institute of Directors. Ansi, a very good afternoon to you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Ansi, uh, Ms. Carroll's certainly not independent. You could also argue that she's not non-executive at uh, Anglo Platinum. Are there any precedents for this? No, n not, not really in, um, in recent times. Um, I think most companies have moved away from appointing um, uh, uh, persons um, as, as chairman uh, where they are conflicted or where they're not independent. So do you see a conflict with, with, this, uh, with Cynthia Carroll being the CEO of Anglo-American and now also the chairwoman of Anglo-Platinum? Is there a direct conflict? There is, there, there is definitely a conflict because um, uh, Anglo-American, we must remember, owns 76.5% of the shares in Anglo-Plat. So there is definitely a conflict. However, one must also remember that the King 3 report contains a set of principles and guidelines that should be considered on the apply or explain principle. And with governance, you always have the issue that you must find a balance between conformance and performance. Now, I'm just guessing that um, Anglo-American probably felt that they needed strong leadership at, leadership at anglo Platt, and um, that that justifies the appointment, even though she isn't independent. But uh, that doesn't mean that one can leave it at that. Of course, you must put then compensating governance measures in place in order that you still achieve the um, overarching aim of the corporate governance principle, and that is that um, there is unfettered uh, decision-making at board level. Now, of course, Angela Platinum was at pains to, to explain yesterday that there is a relief mechanism, and that is Vali Musa, the former tourism minister. He's going to be the deputy chairman, yes. and he's also going to be the chairman of the governance committee. Do you think this should give enough comfort to minority shareholders? I think it should give some comfort to minority shareholding, and in, in fact, that is what, what the King report also recommends. It says if your chairman isn't um, independent, the board should appoint a lead independent, not executive director, and, and that seems to be the role that Vali Musa will, will fulfill. Of course, as you pointed out, Anglo-American does own a very large stake in Anglo-Platinum. Um, so, of course, it's going to do what's in its, its best interest for this company going forward, you would, you would assume, but that's also probably going to be in the best interest, to some extent, for minority shareholders. Yes. Um, Yes, absolutely, and 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 minority protection is is of course one of of, of the the main uh, governance objectives that one should strive towards. The the other issue that um, Anglo Platt should probably address then is is the issue of the conflicts of interest, and they should probably um, relook at the conflict policies and procedures and and really make sure that those are robust. Of course, as you said, King 3 is really just principles and guidelines. It's not enforceable by law at this stage. Do you think companies who do flounce the corporate governance um, should be censured for it? I think there would also be, always be imp implicit, uh, implied censure in, in, in the sense that um, there will be a, a loss of reputation if they don't follow corporate governance rules and guidelines. I mean, if, if you just look at the example of, of ESCOM and, and the difficulty that arose uh, from this debacle around the purchase of the World Cup tickets and how difficult it made the negotiations with, with their employees. So uh, there, there will always be um, um, implied sanctions, e even though they may not be direct in the sense of a fine or, or, or criminal sanctions. Of course, there has been ongoing speculation that Anglo-American at some stage might like to buy out minorities in Anglo-Platinum. Mm. Um, if the company looked at buying out minorities, would Ms. Carroll have to recuse herself from any decisions here and from any guidance that she might give the company? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and that is why I made the point earlier in relation to minority protection, that it would be very important for anglo plats to look at the conflict of interest procedures and, and, and policies to make sure that those are really robust and they should 
provide for a situation, for instance, a, a, um, such as the one that you've just mentioned. Of course, Ansia, you were quoted in the papers last week just saying that boards of companies have to have very strong succession plans in place. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the succession plans were, were with, with Anglo Platinum. But of course, things can go all right. And I think you were quoted particularly in the case of the Australian uh, board of directors that were mostly killed in, a, in an airplane crash. Does this kind of highlight just how important it is to have succession planning at companies? For sure. I, I think that is one of the major risks facing companies. Um, there the, is, is nothing um, like a rudderless a, a company um, or, or a company that, that is in a position of uncertainty because, um, a, a weak, because of a weak succession plan. A, a succession plan is always very difficult to execute and a very emotive issue, and I, I think that, that sometimes um, accounts for, for, for the weak succession planning that we see. And so you have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you.